Hi, I'm Renee from the Bee and Bear Homestead and I'm doing some preserving tonight. I've got some peach honey butter cooking on the stove and I'm about to get started making some ketchup overnight in my slow cooker. So this is a recipe I've adapted from the classic preserving book, Putting Food By. I highly recommend this book if you are new to canning because um, it has got so many recipes on it and anything you could want to preserve, not just can, but freeze and dry, it has information on how to do so safely. So I'm using a recipe that was intended for cooking down on the stove with boiling water bath canning. And I'm still going to boiling water bath can it at the end, but instead of letting it cook on the stove, um, I have learned over the years that it's an easy way to reduce things like ketchup and uh, barbecue sauce is to put it in a slow cooker and you can leave the lid off and let it reduce overnight. It's also a great use of cherry tomatoes. So we have two cherry tomato plants this year and they are putting off tomatoes like crazy. So I'm gonna use a lot of little cherry tomatoes and some of our nice big Hungarian hearts. And to skip the step of removing the skins and seeds, I'm going to use a masticating juicer to just get tomato juice and reduce that for my ketchup. If you don't have a nice juicer, you can still make ketchup. Um, you just have to do the, you just have to remove the skins and the seeds the normal way with blanching and um, with the ice water bath, which I have a whole video about how you can do that. It's in the how to can diced tomatoes video that's on this channel. but. I'll show you how to get started making ketchup in a slow cooker overnight. Here are the ingredients and tools I'm going to use to make this recipe. I've got 12 pounds of tomatoes, a mixture of big tomatoes and the cherry tomatoes. I've got some spices that I'll be letting cook with the tomatoes in the slow cooker overnight. Sugar, apple cider vinegar, cayenne, and salt and onions, the masticating juicer. Masticating just means it takes time to chew up the food better so you get more of the pulp than you might with a high speed juicer. My slow cooker and the classic putting food by book. I am, as I said, adapting the recipe. It called for 24 pounds of tomatoes so I've reduced the recipe uh, to use six pounds instead of 24. And I'm also using the slow cooker, which it said to use the stove. But I have done this before, and I know you can do it safely. You're still going to make sure your tools and equipment is clean, your hands are clean, you're gonna make sure your produce is clean, and also um, it, you're gonna make sure you have the vinegar in your ketchup, to add acidity. So that's important when you're, you're canning food. Just make sure you have enough acid levels in it so that you can can it safely. The first step is going to be to juice our tomatoes. Or if you don't have a juicer, you're going to need to cut up your tomatoes and um, put them in your pot or your slow cooker. And uh, then after they're, they're softened, run them through a sieve. A juicer is a great way to deal with cherry tomatoes. They're so small that um, unless you're gonna eat them all uh, or dehydrate them, which is another great way to preserve them, um, they're very hard to deal with. So I like to juice mine um, because that way you get the good stuff and the seeds and skins get just uh, taken out by the juicer. So I'm using six pounds of tomatoes I'm gonna start with the cherry tomatoes. I'm just putting them in my juicer. You can see that um, orange tomato juice is, is coming out of the bottom and seeds and skins are coming out of the other end. I think that it's possible that using a juicer makes a little bit of a thinner of tomato juice than it would be if you got them hot on the stove 
and then used a sieve to remove the skins and seeds, which I showed how to do in um, the garlic marinara sauce video. So that's also an option, and you could do that with the, ch the cherry tomatoes. Um, I've done this before for ketchup, and it's worked well for me. It's a little faster, and it's a little less hot. You're not standing over the stove. So um, I think it works well if you have the option to use a juicer. Here's a close-up of the juicer in action. You can see I've got over a cup of juice already, and um, there's not much waste. So that's another reason why I like the masticating juicer um, types as opposed to some of the, well, less expensive, honestly, but uh, more common, faster moving juicers that you might find. But um, it's a pretty good way to get all the good stuff out of your vegetables and not a whole lot of waste. I'm jumping back in to say that if you don't have a juicer, you can still make this recipe in your slow cooker. What you need to do to get to this point is to chop your onions and then chop and core your tomatoes. Put them in your slow cooker at high for about an hour to let your tomatoes get all juicy and a little bit loose. Then put the whole thing through a sieve or a food mill uh, to get rid of the skins and the seeds. Then you can add your vinegar and your spices and your sugar and all that good stuff that you'll see me doing in just a moment and cook it in your slow cooker overnight. I used my juicer to process all six pounds of tomatoes and they have pretty much filled up my slow cooker. So this is um, a standard size slow cooker and it is filled pretty full with tomato juice. So I'm going to let it reduce overnight, but I have to add in the other ingredients next uh, so all those good flavors will melt. So I have about a cup of onion chopped up here. I'm going to add. Now probably in the morning, um, whir this up with an immersion blender so that those onion pieces that will have softened can be added and be... Um, incorporated fully. I'm going to add a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. A cup of apple cider vinegar. And then I have a mixture of spices that I already measured and put together in this bowl. I have about a teaspoon of whole cloves. I have one cinnamon stick. I have a half a teaspoon of whole allspice and one tablespoon of celery seeds. And you're supposed to use a little bit of cheesecloth and tie it in a ball and um, let it steep into your tomato mixture. I don't have cheesecloth. Um, I have used a metal tea infuser before but this is a little bit too much spices to fit so because I'm a mom and I have a baby um, I'm going to use this uh, teething tool that you're supposed to like put fruit frozen fruit in for them to teeth on this has been cleaned um, in my dishwasher so it's nice and clean and, and um, no baby has been sucking on it and I think it's going to work well uh, to infuse the spices um, so I'm going to finish adding the other things before I add in the spices. I'll add a half a cup of brown sugar. And the last thing is a tablespoon of salt. I have it on high right now because I'm going to be in the kitchen and I can keep my eye on it. And so that'll help it get to temperature and um, start to reduce it might splatter a little bit so um, I'll just kind of keep my eye on it and then before I go to sleep I'm going to turn it to low and let it cook overnight I usually leave the lid all the way off if that bothers you um, you can sort of put the lid on askew but the whole point is that you are letting moisture escape 
so you don't want to leave the lid on. So I'm going to rig up my uh, spices in my teething tool here and um, I'll be right back. My ingredients are in my slow cooker. So in a standard recipe for making ketchup, you would need to be boiling this on the stove probably for several hours um, because obviously it's quite thin and ketchup is thick. Um, I've stuffed my teething tool full of the, the spice mix that um, you don't want those whole spices in your ketchup, but they make it really flavorful. So I'm just gonna dunk that in there um, and let it soak in. So as I was saying, in a standard recipe, you'd be boiling this on the stove for several hours, but um, a slow cooker actually works really well to reduce uh, tomatoes um, into a nice thicker substance without uh, standing over the stove for a long time. So I'm gonna let it cook on low overnight. I have a note that when I made this last, I actually ended up reducing it for 17 and a half hours. Um, so overnight plus most of the next day. So I'm not sure how long it will take this time, but I'll let it go overnight and then I'll be back tomorrow uh, with an updated next step for making ketchup in your slow cooker. Good morning. It's been about eight hours since I started the tomato sauce and um, you can see it's reduced by quite a bit because uh, when I started it last night, it was almost to the rim of my slow cooker and it's reduced a lot, but it still has a lot of reducing to go to be tomato ketchup consistency. I'm going to use my immersion blender now and whir up these onions. There's still some um, large onion pieces you can see in this and then I'll just let it cook down for probably most of the rest of today. All total, my ketchup has been cooking in my slow cooker for about 15 hours and is at a consistency that looks good to me. So I'm gonna get ready to can it up. Here is my product after about 15 hours of cooking on low in my slow cooker. Uh, nice consistency. So I'm going to put it in jars. I'm gonna use pint jars and I have a half pint ready to go just in case. Um, and then I will can it in the boiling water bath for 15 minutes. Just like any time you are canning, make sure that you have washed your hands and that your surfaces and tools are clean. I've got my half pint jars in hot, they've been washed in there in this hot and simmering water. And my ketchup is still hot from um, simmering in the slow cooker. So it's all ready to go. There's my spices. So it worked out pretty well actually. So if you're ever in a pinch, you can use one of those baby teething things. This recipe calls for just, it actually says an eighth of inch of headspace. This is not much at all. I have rarely seen recipes with that little amount of headspace. I'm probably going to do about a fourth. You don't want to have too little head space. You don't really want too much, so I'll try to get it close to an eighth an inch. Wipe your rims with a clean washcloth. Put a clean lid on, a clean ring. Tighten it up. and put it back in the simmering water. When you've got all of your jars filled, you're going to wait for the water to get back up to a full rolling boil and process it for 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes. My jars have been processing in a nice rolling boil. So it's time to take them out. As always, it's best to set them on either a dish towel or I like to use a wire rack. Keep them right off your counter. Stop it from having some sort of um, shock from going from the hot pot to your cool counter. Try not to touch them for about 24 hours to let them seal. 
and then it'll be time to enjoy your ketchup. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial for how to make your own ketchup using a slow cooker. This recipe ended up making me five half pints plus a little, almost six, and one jar just sealed. Almost six, but it didn't quite fill the jar, so I'll just put this in the fridge. It seems like a lot of work to make your own ketchup. You know, sometimes people ask me like, why would you do that? It, you just buy it in the store, it's so cheap. Well, the stuff you buy in the store is cheap and it doesn't taste like much. It, it's a made up product almost. It, I don't think it tastes like tomatoes anymore. Um, and homemade ketchup tastes great. It has your own ingredients in it that you probably grew yourself. Um, and if you use the slow cooker to reduce it, it doesn't actually have a whole lot of active time. I think it maybe took a total of two hours of active time, including the canning, and the rest of the time was just the slow cooker uh, slowly simmering away the extra moisture in the tomatoes. So, um, good luck. Let me know if you end up using this method to make your own ketchup or any of the other recipes that you can find here on our channel. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll subscribe to the Bean Bear Homestead. We have more canning recipes and uh, other how-to videos, plus updates on our garden and trying to, uh, as much as we can, live off the land. Thanks for watching.